Hi, in today's video, let's take a look at the electronics inside this Beats wireless headphone. So this one is a model number uh, 810-00012-00 model. And one of my coworkers actually gave up on it because it stopped working. I actually fixed this very headphone for him about two years ago. And the issue was that there was some design flaws with the left channel to the right channel wiring, as I will show you a little bit later. But the wiring is uh, right here. This wiring connecting the left channel to the right channel. So after some repeated uh, uh, he this, uh, headband adjustments uh, over the years, the wiring actually broke loose. So which caused the problem? And I think this time uh, when it broke again, it was caused by the exact same problem. And this particular model, although it's uh, more than two years old now, and uh, it's by no means cheap. This is a, uh, when it first was released, it was more than $200. And so I expected the quite, uh, you know, better constructions than what I saw before, which I will show you in a little bit. But one of the primary design flaw, I think, is that they separated the electronics into both uh, of these earphones, both sides. So what happened is, because the electronics are in on either side, they have to use multiple wires uh, to link them together, which uh, comes to our problem because the wires here is, you know, as you can see, it's very thin, which I will take it uh, off just a little bit. So once the wire breaks off, the control signal is lost, and then you know it just stops working. So without further ado, let's. Uh, open it up and see how the construction looks inside. I think we just uh, removed these two brackets. Okay. And now you can kind of see where the wire wire went through here. So the wiring I was talking about is this one. Uh, whoops, it just went to over. The wiring I was trying to talk about, I was talking about is this one, okay? So this wire not only has the, uh, the two wires for the earphone itself, but also has a lot of control wires inside. So I think there are like five or six wires. And as you can see here already, and it doesn't really have any uh, strain relief on these move, moving parts. So over time, what happened is this, um, wire gets uh, stretched and uh, compressed, even though it's quite soft, it uh, nevertheless, um, you know, would lose its ability to connect. Now, I think how I got this off, uh, I can't remember, it was brute force or something, I think there's a, there were two clips, and uh, we should be able to um, clip this and uh, open it up. So let me bring a screwdriver over and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my screwdriver over here. And what is this? We don't need that. And let's take a look at, oh, that piece just broke off. That's okay, we, uh, we can fix that later. So let's take a look at uh, the, right hand, the right side first. So this is the part where the battery sits. Now, I don't know why they divided the electronics into uh, uh, the both parts. Both, both sides because they could just fit everything in one but I suspect that's because the uh, they wanted uh, both sides weight the weight to be similar to to the other side and I think I'm really having problem opening this at the second time I thought this was just a clip last time um, I guess I have to open it up off the camera because uh, the angle here is really awkward I can't really get to it so let me open it up. Just give me a few minutes. Okay, so I managed to pry it open. Yeah, I just had to use it a little harder because as you can see the clips here actually are uh, are quite, uh, you know, it doesn't have a lot of springy feeling to it. But anyway, so the first thing you can see is that uh, the earphone, by the way, this is just uh, the, the actual uh, the diaphragm and the um, 
and the magnet. So that's just the, the speaker portion of the earphone. There's really nothing to it, which I suppose we can take a look at just a little bit later. But um, this side I actually did not uh, fix last time. But as you can see, so so I want to show you first because you can see how the original construction looks like. Now, uh, as you can see here, which I will zoom in a little bit so we can see a little bit better. Here we go. So here is the Bluetooth module, and you can see all these wires. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, all these came in from this uh, earphone going to the other side, and uh, some of these are control wires, and all these are very, very thin strand. So, um, and you know, and I ca I cannot for the life of me finding a a connection cable that has this many uh, thin strands in there. So last time I fixed when I fixed it, I had to be very creative. In fact, the the fix was not really pretty. I used uh, some glue, some uh, you know like tape, and stuff like that. And uh, so that's I suspect why it broke again. But when you look at this, I mean, when people spend like um, two hundred dollars on a pair of uh, headphones, I would expect the quality to be a little better than this. And unfortunately, that's what it has here. So now on the back end, um, I might, well, this is actually glued down or waxed down, as you can see here. Um, so really, it's not designed for you to repair. But, uh, I mean, circuit wise, I suppose the most magic happens underneath this uh, uh, Bluetooth module and uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna open it up now I'm looking at this actually might be pretty much impossible to open it up because they glued everything down uh, put so anyway so let me try to open the other way the other side and we'll take a look at what I did last time okay let me zoom it out so that we can actually see what's going on here There we go. Yes. So wow. So that's really, really, really hard to get off uh, this this side. It's not, you know, you try not to break it, but it's actually not broken. It's just the clips are extremely hard. So there's one more clip here. Okay. There we go. So we already uh, see that. Uh, I'm not sure if we have two. Okay. So you can see my. Um, fix last time. Well, maybe you can't see, but uh, so I have some uh, excessive tape here. So let me try working on that a little bit and I will see how far we can get. Okay, so I ended up uh, spending a lot of time trying to get the glued part off and uh, so finally I was able to get the circuit board out. Of course, uh, you know, uh, this kind of thing after you disassemble it, it's going to be very difficult to put it back. But I'm not expecting uh, to, I'm not uh, planning to put it back. Uh, I just want to show you what is uh, inside. So here, as you can see, this is the main board of uh, the Speed's uh, headphone. And uh, this main board actually is a kind of off-the-shelf uh, in the middle. This is off-the-shelf uh, Bluetooth transceiver module. And here we have a Spencer, uh 2 megabits flash memory and here we have a CSR 57E6 uh, Bluetooth audio transceiver module a chip sorry so I believe you can actually buy this uh, middle part this module by itself and uh, there are a lot of uh, transceivers uh, available on eBay look pretty much just exactly the same as this one so I don't think this is uh, something that they uh, made by themselves, but rather just bought some off-the-shelf components and So now on top there's not too much to it and uh, one thing nice about this is actually you can see all the uh, points where the uh, the wiring comes in are all marked so um, Right now even though I desoldered it, it's actually not difficult to solder them back because they're all marked So on the back end here uh, all these are actually uh, the standard tactile uh, 
buttons rather than those uh, uh, you know the the ones you etched onto the circuit board so so this is actually pretty good now this tiny chip here let me take a quick look here actually is a uh, PAM8908 so that is actually a headphone driver so that is designed for low distortion uh, you know amplification so which is uh, obviously you know they use that to to make the sound quality uh, rather pleasant so besides these I mean there's surprisingly uh, it's actually there's nothing nothing else to it now interestingly is uh, all these boards have some kind of a handwritten stuff so I'm not sure if it is just a QA procedure or things like that you see here um, I, bet, I bet that's somebody's uh, initial here on the board we have the marking solo BT2 so this is a, presumably the series that we're dealing with here and so this is the main board and uh, the board quality itself is actually very good but it's just unfortunate how they wired everything and I guess I suppose there's really not too much of a uh, choice here but still I'm puzzled as to why they have to uh, build these two boards one on either side of the earphone because had they uh, you know put everything on one side I don't think we will run into this problem of the wiring breaking off anyway so that's a uh, that's a main board and here's a board on the other side so it really has nothing here as you can see this uh, board is pretty empty and uh, really this whole board is just for your lithium-ion battery charging so uh, this chip itself is a BRQ2407 which is a, a standard chip from uh, Texas Instrument for controlling your uh, battery charging and in fact this board by itself, if you just look at here, um, we can probably take just to keep this board and uh, use it as is for as battery charger. So here is our battery con connection terminal here. And by the way, this is just the, uh, the original battery that is uh, double side taped down to one of the circuit board. I think it's the board with the, uh, uh, the other board here anyway. So now that's pretty much all the circuitry is it to that and of course there's a little bit more in one of the uh, the earphones by the way the earphone I also took it apart so in one of the uh, the earphone you will see that there, there are two wires coming out one is this uh, multi-stranded wire one is just a standard uh, um, stereo wire and in fact that wire itself doesn't it really doesn't do much this is just for your uh, earphone plug I believe uh, that's where the integrated uh, wired uh, control signal can come in okay so and here's the other one so these are not even magnetically shielded as we're gonna see we can lift this right up and lastly I just want to show you what the uh, connection looks like uh, the, the, the actual wire looks like so as you can see these thin wires uh, now I can actually see we have one two three four five five strands of uh, uh, the five connection wires inside and each of these are you know are very very thin so um, if they had done what I described earlier they only needed uh, two wires to go across the board right to power the other earphone and all the electronics can stay uh, on one end so that would significantly increase the, uh, the uh, reliability of this earphone but uh, again, you know, these things are uh, very expensive and uh, the, the quality and design certainly doesn't really uh, impress me that much. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up and do remember to subscribe. I will catch up with you next time.